just what I mean You too, T, keep it clean You see my boy, he like got a made it Got a made it Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven Right and graven this next episode of questions from subs is going to be sort of a, a patron takeover uh, and before we get into a special shout out to the team keep it clean patrons uh the newest patrons uh willie c and pablo 702 um so i appreciate y'all because uh, again with being a patron um it's something that is it makes it more special since it's nothing that's required I mean, it's something that people are willing to do, people going out of their way to do to show extra support for the channel. Uh, and, and I thank you for that. Uh, shout out to every single patron, uh, the old ones who've been there from the jump, the new ones who, um, who are more recent and everything in between and everybody. Uh, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. I love everybody. Um, but for the patrons, I, I really appreciate what y'all do. Uh, for anybody that would possibly like to become a patron, if you want to, cool. If you don't want to, cool. It's fine either way. Please do not ever feel bad uh, for, and do not ever apologize too. Because seeing some people apologize, oh, sorry, I can't. Don't apologize for not becoming a patron. That does not deserve an apology. It, it's okay. Uh, but for anybody who would like to become a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. And like I said, if you don't want to, that's fine as well. Um, but getting into it, the first question uh, came from my guy, Nazarene. He said, hey, what's good, Engraven? Question for you. Uh, and appreciate you being a patron. This uh, question for you and the fans. So, look, when Kyler Murray got his contract, everyone was saying that that's the type of contract Lamar should get. Now that the contract clause has been exposed, do you think the Ravens will have a similar clause in Lamar's contract? Matter of fact, what do you think the clause in Lamar's contract would be if the Ravens added one? Appreciate you. Now, I appreciate you. Now, that first part, um, everyone's saying that's the kind of contract Lamar should get. I think for Lamar... Um, if, if I'm him, I'm not even asking. I'm demanding more guaranteed money. I, I'm demanding more guaranteed money because I'm looking at Kyler Murray. I'm looking at his track record. I'm looking at um, the level of success that he's obtained. I'm looking at all the accolades. And I'm comparing that to me. I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. Shout out to Kyler Murray, by the way, and hope he, he does well. But he hasn't reached Lamar Jackson level yet. Um, so I am... Um, I'm saying, hey, I, I need more guaranteed money from Jump. Now, the part of your question that I like the most, he said, now that the contract clause has been exposed, even though they removed it now, apparently, um, but he said, now that the contract clause has been exposed, do you think the Ravens will have a similar clause in Lamar's contract? Oh, man, no, I do not. Because um, Lamar Jackson throughout his career, and and still now, like it, it, it and it's never gonna stop. He has continued to be disrespected. Uh, people try to talk down on him as a quarterback, as a person, um, and he, he has continued to be disrespected. I think that there would absolutely be no way, no chance at all, that Lamar Jackson's camp would allow a clause like that to be in his contract. Because you know, like Kyler's. Every contract gets looked at super close, um, but Lamar Jackson's contract is going to be looked at even closer than any of these other contracts because it's Lamar Jackson, we know. And if they were to have something in there, that would make Lamar Jackson, that would make him look bad. And, and that would be a disrespect to him as a quarterback, to him as a professional. The fact, Oh, yeah, you got to study, what was it, at least four hours a week? If the Ravens put that in there, I don't think Lamar Jackson would even sign that contract. I think him and his camp will look at that and they say, don't try us. Don't try us with that. Don't 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 put no clause like that. Because, again, because it would be dissected. And, 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 and even before it got dissected and whatnot from the media and whatnot, having to have that in a contract, why would you even pay a guy if you feel like you have to force them to study? Why would you pay a guy? Because if you got to force somebody to study, that means you don't really trust them. And a the quarterback of your franchise, if you're really paying them all that money, be like, hey, you, you got to study, though. What, what, what kind of contract is that? So they, <laughs> I don't think that would that would make it uh, to a Lamar Jackson contract. Um, then he said, matter of fact, what do you think the clause in Lamar's contract would be if the Ravens added one? Um, probably... Uh, Free meals for the team at least once a year from the restaurant. Um, but now, uh, 
I, I think I don't know uh, That's a really good question um, I'm sure there would be Like they would want to limit Certain things that he does In the off season They may want to limit Certain activities or, or the level of activity That he engages in physically uh, In the off season um, I could see them putting something like that Because cause again it's a big contract So things like that are expected but I can't think of like anything too crazy, like anything too wild. Uh, and as long as it ain't anything that's disrespectful. <laughs> Next question came from my boy Marco. And shout out to you for being a patron and continuing to send fire questions. Let's see if you keep that fire going. He said, what's good engraving? I was watching a live training camp and kept pausing it when they showed the crowd to see if I see you. But unfortunately, didn't. Hey, it's all good uh, As long as Simply got shown I was sitting right next to Simply Shout out to him by the way that, That's my guy man um, But yeah I was sitting right next to him But he said uh, Anyways I think it's a good idea That the Ravens don't Pick up a vet wide receiver And here's why I'm all for Lamar Having more help And targets uh, However Unlike most teams Ravens have at least Two tight ends And one running back On the field Meaning They, they have only Two wide receivers Out there at all times Sometimes Three tight ends and one running back. Therefore, only one wide receiver out there. My point is in our scheme and philosophy. Wide receiver one and wide receiver two get the bulk of the targets. Mostly wide receiver one, which would be Bateman. Wide receiver three, four, and five might not get more than a couple of targets. I think losing Hollywood, Boykin, and Watkins actually helps our current receivers because they'll actually have opportunities to be out there and not be drowned out by other guys. Well, well certainly, of course. Sammy Watkins was a starter. Hollywood was a starter. So, of course, losing those guys will give opportunities to everybody else that's left. Um, so, yeah. And, and then Boykin, too. Them removing him. That added just another spot. That, that let it, Every time you lose somebody on the depth chart, especially somebody that's in front of you, obviously, you get to move up a bit. So, I'm sure all the other receivers, they were not necessarily happy about those, but they're probably happy about those uh, other guys leaving. Um, he said... Uh, I think addition by subtraction in this case benefits our current core. Now, whether or not it benefits the Ravens and Lamar long term, that remains to be seen. But I'm very confident and optimistic after what I've seen in camp. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this. Looking forward to all the videos. Stay safe and peace out. Yeah, we'll see. Um, something that we talked about in a, another video is uh, with the Ravens receivers. Them just... Uh, Viewing this situation as all right, it's, it's, it's my time now. Uh, it's my time to have a chance. It's my time to really have a shot um, because I likened it to, to situations that I've been in. I'm trying to really put myself in their shoes. Um, when you feel like you you deserve a shot and you're worthy of a shot and you're worthy of a chance and you're just consistently not getting it, it can be frustrating. Uh, but then when the opportunity presents itself, it's like, all right, you, you want to make the most of it. Um, so this could be the Ravens receivers making um, the most of it. Uh, I still think the Ravens philosophy, it does need some fine tuning. Um, but I guess if, since, since they're not going to fine tune it right, well, we'll see. We'll see. We don't know yet. We got to see how they do things. Um, but if, if they're going to just continue to do what they've been doing, then, hey, ho hopefully it just works out the best way that it possibly can. These next two questions came from my boy Phil, and appreciate you being a patron. He said, this morning on Get Up, Jeff Darlington reported yesterday at Ravens camp, he spoke to a few people and was told Baltimore has laid down one of their final offers to Lamar, but wasn't able to find out what the offer was since he has no agent. Ooh, you can't find out. Anyway, um, if you were Lamar, would you accept or put your career on the line and play out the final season of your contract? Because if Lamar gets hurt a third year in a row, it could lower his value and cost him money in future office. Third year in a row, yet yeah, that that it that would be technical. But again, third year in a row paints it like this dude is some injury prone player, and like he's always getting hurt. Because it, again, it's it's the way that you say it. It's not what you say, but how you say it. Oh yeah, Lamar getting hurt third year in a row. That would uh, lower his value and cost him money in future offers. But let's look at what happened and, and how it happened. Uh, the first year the concussion. Patrick McCarry decided he wanted to play quarterback. He was jealous. He wanted to play quarterback. So he threw it to, threw a ball to Lamar. Lamar went down to, to catch it. It was incomplete. Lamar went down to pick it up. And then, boom, got whacked, landed on his head. Boom. He's out for the rest of the game. And that was a playoff game, too, by the way. Um, so he just missed the rest of the game. He missed the season. He missed a bunch of games. And then, of course, last year, um, on a passing play, 
uh, offensive line, you know, they weren't good at blocking last year, but um, offensive line let the pressure through. Jock came through. Lamar rolled out to his right, threw the ball. Jock went for them ankles, uh, and that was it. Then that took Lamar out for the rest of the season, and that was that. Um, so it's not like, like, with the injuries that he's got, it's not like, it's because of his play style because that's the, the way you said it could lead someone to believe like, oh, man, Lamar Jackson, he plays the game reckless and it's because he's doing all that running. That's why he got hurt and da 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 But it's it's the exact opposite. And that's what a lot of these analysts have done, too. They say, oh, yeah, Lamar Jackson, he got hurt the last two years. He didn't make it the, that, to the end of the season the last two years. And it's like, ah, well, let's, that's why we say context is so important. Um, but. With Lamar Jackson, like if 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 the offer is not good enough, then no, yeah, you just play, play it out, you play it out. You should not short term yourself, especially if you know your value. Never short term, never short term, never lowball yourself. Never know your worth, know your worth, and don't accept anything less. All right, and his next question, he said, now since Brady reached out to Julio before he made his decision between Green Bay, Tampa, and New Orleans, oh, he was thinking about New Orleans? Well, okay, yeah, they do go against them Falcons. He's probably still looking for revenge. Um, he said he's made enough money and wanted the best chance of, uh, the best chance at getting a ring now that he's about 32 years old. With the receiver core of Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Russell Gage, Julio, Scotty Miller, uh, Johnson, uh, which causes the younger receivers to lose playing time. I know it won't happen since it seems EDC is looking for tall receivers with a height advantage. Um, but after Godwin went down, we saw the speed that Scotty Miller showed in the playoffs last year, who I believe is still on his rookie contract, which will probably only cost a fourth or fifth rounder. What are your thoughts? <sighs> Honestly, um, I don't think Ravens need any more little receivers. Um, they don't need any more smaller slot wide receivers. Um, I my personal preference, opinion, all that is that they it, it would it would be more beneficial for them to get uh, an outside guy, an outside receiver, not another smaller receiver that's gonna no, no more smaller slot receivers. Go get another outside guy. You got a lot of smaller slot receivers already. Scotty Miller, yeah, he's cool, great, but I just, no. If they got him, okay, cool, whatever, but no, man. I, I think they need more big body guys, bigger catch radiuses, um, bigger targets. Just, yeah, no more no more slot guys for me. Question came from my boy uh, Zalon. I ain't even going to try to read that name because I know I done messed it up already and it's only going to get worse from here. But anyway, next question came from my guy X. He said, do you think we will see good, mediocre, or just bad tackling in the preseason from our guys? No, I, I think the tackling will be great because it's preseason. And you know, Ravens in the preseason, they've been undefeated for years uh, and they are undefeated for years for a reason. So it should be great. Now, let's just hope in the regular season it can be great as well. Tight end, bad luck. Next question came from my guy Sedarian. He said, Engraven, hope you and the fam are doing great. One thing I've noticed is that when the Ravens double dip at tight end, the second tight end drafted ends up having the better career for the Ravens, while the first tight end tends to flame out. Well, yeah, this has been a conversation that's been brought up recently, especially after Charlie Collar with his hernia injury. Um, and now he's, I think, did he have the surgery already or is he having it this week? I forget. But he's going to have the surgery, so he'll be out for a while. But anyway, um, he said, uh, Ed Dixon and Dennis Pitter. Yeah, we know how that went. Um, Max Williams and Nick Boyle. Oh, ah, that's a good one. I forgot about that one. Uh, Hayden Hurst and Mark Andrews. Well, we know how that's going. And now Charlie Collar and Isaiah Likely. Um, he said Isaiah Likely was already the better receiving option and has looked great at camp. I'm not saying that this will happen again, but this pattern isn't looking good for Charlie Collar, especially with the sports hernia injury. What are your thoughts? Hey, yeah, that's that's how it's been um, for the Ravens and their tight ends. Um, and Charlie Collar, I'm sure I'm sure that he he done seen the update and all that. He done seen this sort of statistic or whatnot. So he got to be looking like, man, I, I got to hurry and come back. So, um, but yeah, I mean, we, we just got to see how it, it, it plays out. Because, yeah, that has been the pattern. When the Ravens, they took two, uh, that, that second one that they took ended up being more successful. So we'll see what happens with Isaiah Likely. 
What's up with EDC? Next question came from Terry. He said, Hey, Engraven, hope you and the fam chilling and having a blessed summer. May God continue to bless you. I know it's been a minute since I sent a question. Hey, it's all good, man. I appreciate it and I appreciate uh, everything, man. He said, I want to ask you this. Is it embarrassing to say that the Bucks have done more for Tom Brady's first three years in Tampa than the Ravens, uh, proving help for Lamar's first five years in the league? And it's not even that, but guys like Herbert, who hasn't played a single playoff, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but the Jets with Zach Wilson. If you don't mind, I wanted to break it down for you and to have more context, if you don't mind. Uh, and if you don't want to go through it, it's completely fine. No, you know, context is everything here, man. Um, the Bucks had Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Got Antonio Brown, uh, Russell Gage, Julio Jones, Leonard Fournette, Ronald Jones, Gronk, and Kyle Rudolph. Ch and they already had uh, Brait and um, O.J. Howard, too. Can't, can't forget about those guys. Anyway, uh, oh, and Scotty Miller, too. Anyway, uh, Chargers, of course, they already had their wide receiver core in Austin Eckler, but Gerald uh, Everett, Sean Slater, Zion Johnson, this year's first round pick, and Corey Lindsley. So uh, adding weapons and upgrade, really upgrading the offensive line. Uh, the Jets, having Makai Becton, Corey Davis, uh, CJ Uzama, uh, Brees Hall, Michael Carter, Garrett Wilson, Elijah Moore, mind you, Zach Wilson's second year. Sorry for the long statement, but I had to say it. Thank you for being great. Best is yet to come and trust. Appreciate that. Um, it depends on who you ask if the Ravens really, uh, have helped Lamar Jackson like that. Um, it all depends on who you ask because some people were like, hey, EDC, He's been pushing with these wide receivers. You saw in his first draft, he drafted Hollywood and Miles Boykin. So he tried for the small, speedy receiver, and he tried for the, the big body receiver. Um, now, but both are gone. Uh, then he said, hey, in 2020, he drafted Duvernay in the third round. He drafted um, James Prochet in the fifth or sixth round. There you go. He double dipped again. Then in 2021, it's hey, Rashad Bateman, first round receiver, then Tylen Wallace in the fourth round. It's like, okay. So with the draft, um, he's been trying with the draft. They, 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 they've been trying. Um, but then as far as proven guys, oh, they tried for DeAndre Hopkins. Oh, yeah, they fell short. They were interested in Julio Jones when he was still with the Falcons when he was getting ready to leave. But uh, they, then they were like, oh, no, they, 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 they decided, no, it's not a good move. Not worth it. It's like, okay, okay. And they were interested in Jarvis Landry, but oh, no, it ain't end up happening. Man. There were a lot of interest for different guys and whatnot. They tried for some different guys, but you know, a lot of it didn't happen. They did sign Sammy Watkins, and they had Hollywood. And I think, I think that was the best scenario, but then everybody got hurt. Because they had Hollywood, Sammy Watkins, and Rashad Bateman, and then Duvernay and Prochet. Um... And and Tylen Wallace too. So I, and and Boykin. So I thought last year they were in a good situation, but everybody got hurt. Um, so it just it didn't get to really be maximized. But then there's been the Dez Bryant's. It's been Willie Sneed, who was straight. Um, been Seth Roberts. Um, they're just like as far as the pro proven guys, they just the the quality just hasn't been there. The, the quality hasn't been there. Um, and especially when you look when you look around the league, you didn't even talk about Tua. You didn't even talk about Jalen Hurts. You didn't even talk about Baker Mayfield. Like you, you. So you you didn't even include a, a lot of guys who you could have included to make it look even worse uh, for what like the Ravens have done uh, as far as Lamar Jackson with his weapons. Tight ends though, they. Mark Andrews, so yeah, yeah, that's 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 a really great one. Um, Nick Boyle, he's been straight. Uh, so and Hayden Hurst, they had him for a little bit. Uh, he was cool too, but you know he just he wanted his playing time. Um, but yeah, uh, they finally like really did a lot better on the offensive line uh, this year. Really like going at it, first round picks, free agents. Um, so that that's good. Uh, but yeah, there's just there just seems to have been a lack. Um, and this is what we've been just talking about for a long time, man. Um been talking about it for a long time. And, and it would be nice to see and I know there'd be a lot of people, oh the Ravens do things their own way. Stop trying to be like these other teams. The Ravens are the Ravens, they're not these other teams and But you just you you you, you want to see them 
really show like, hey, we Lamar, we got you. Lamar, we 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 got you. We 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 got your back, man. That's all we want to see. Well, that's all I want to see. Some people are like, oh, they already shown that. I, uh, yes or no? Depends on what area you're talking about, and it depends on who you talk to. But uh, just doing more. That that's that's what I would love to see the Ravens do. Next question came from my boy Daryl. He said, "Good evening. This is my first time sending an email, but how are you and the fam doing? Hey, we doing really good. Hope you and the fam doing even better, Daryl. Uh, there's no doubt that Lamar will get paid, but do you think that if Lamar doesn't get paid and they use the franchise tag on him, uh, do you think they'll be using Lamar to train up Huntley as a replacement? Because I was watching some highlights of Huntley, and his play style reminds me of Josh Allen in some ways. How so? Um, yeah, I wish you would have dove, dove into that a little bit more. Uh, but I." Mm, We'll see how this thing shakes out, man. I hope it does not come to that. Uh, I hope it doesn't come to the franchise tag. Because uh, if it came to the franchise tag, things could get really nasty. Things could be really nasty right now. But if it comes to the franchise tag, I think things could they, they could get ugly. Um, because if you, if you make it to the franchise tag, then that means the offer that you put out there wasn't good enough for him. And you... You could still want him. You still could still want to keep him, but you could also move. It depend. It would depend on what franchise tag they use. There's that transition tag where it's a certain amount and it's cheaper, I believe. But the 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 team, if a, a team could offer him a deal, and, and if he agreed to that deal, then he'll get traded to that team, and then the Ravens would get two first round picks, uh, and the team would obviously get him as a player, and they would give him a contract. But no, nah, I, I, I they shouldn't do that. Back to your question. As far as the franchise tag, do you think they could be using Lamar to train up Huntley as a replacement? I hope not. I hope that's not what they're doing. Um, Huntley is cool. We love Huntley. Um, but Lamar is Lamar. Lamar Jackson is Lamar Jackson. So I, I really hope that they do not do that. I don't think that they will. But anything possible till it ain't possible no more. Um, but let's hope that this thing does get done. The, the contract I'm talking about, not... What you were saying in the question Next question came from my guy Rich uh, He said Hey Graven, great viz man I love your, but anyways <laughs> Also team keep it clean is too fresh Appreciate that man, thank you uh, My question is, do you ever hear anything about Lamar Jackson's Film study? Hmm, I don't know I've, I've never heard anything About it Um. Oh no, 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 no He talks about it, what am I talking about? He's mentioned that a lot and like even like we've seen it um we've seen it like you know when Marlon Humphrey would go live uh when Marlon Humphrey would go live after the games we've seen when he went to to Lamar Lamar would be watching the the, the film on the iPad so yeah and Lamar's talked about it though we watch film on this team and da, 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 and so yeah we've heard it directly from Lamar and we've seen the little clips and whatnot of Lamar doing it uh so yeah yeah, he said, I've heard he's a savant on the field uh, and soaks in everything after seeing it once or twice. Hey, that's a repetition is a really good teacher. Uh, people don't realize how much an athlete as elite as him, as well uh, as an IQ at th with that high, uh, that put on 15 pounds of muscle correlates to exponential growth. Ooh, okay. Yeah, we're well, we looking forward to it, man. Because, yeah, Lamar done got Jack Lamar. Uh, so... Yeah, we're going to see how it translates on the field, man. He said, awesome content, man. Keep it the good work. Oh, and here's one of my songs if you want to check it out. Okay. Oh, oh, he got a little album. Rich got an album? All right, now, Rich. Okay. Appreciate that, man. Thank you for sending that. So, I'll check it out. Next question came from my guy, Makai. He said, hey, Engraven, wanted to get your opinion on uh, this NFL YouTube I respect. Uh, he said that if you put the Ravens receiving core, including Andrews, on the Packers or Chiefs, they will become an elite team. I, I wanted to get your thoughts on that because I know you're a big uh, critic to the core. We have in Baltimore Keep up the good work So um, This Oh TFG football He said uh, It's amazing Okay So the original tweet was uh, Brian Goot the, the Packers I think GM uh, On the veteran wide receiver market I don't think right now We're really looking to add anything I really like the group we have uh, then TFG Football said, it is amazing to me that an otherwise brilliant scout and GM can have such a blatant blind spot for one position group. Uh, so then somebody responded, that sounds like the Ravens. Uh, then TFG Football responded to them. He said, it's a tired narrative in my opinion. They've given Lamar good players there, but the scheme in Lamar doesn't, don't elevate them. I love the Ravens, but drop Bateman, Brown, Wallace, Duvernay, and Mark Andrews into the Chiefs of Packers, etc. And that's an elite group. Mm. 
Now it's again context is really important. I don't know if he watches the Ravens like that, um, but the half of it I agree with. Half of it I agree with about the scheme not elevating them. That I agree with. Thousand well minus Andrews because the scheme elevates the tight ends, but it does not emphasize the wide receivers. That I agree with, and of course we know Ravens philosophy. They don't really care about wide receivers like that. That's not their thing. But the scheme, nope, it's not for wide receivers. We know that. But Lamar doesn't elevate them. That part, um, that part I disagree with. Uh, because how can the quarterback elevate the players if the quarterback's in the same scheme? That they, They're all in the same scheme together. It's not like Lamar's in one scheme and the players are in another scheme. No, they're all in the same scheme together. So the, the scheme limits the wide receivers big time. And I was just said to myself, hey, if a lot of these guys were on different teams. They were drafted to different teams with different schemes that emphasize more on the passing game. I'm sure they would be doing a lot better. But Ravens don't emphasize the passing game. So, yeah, this, so, yeah I, 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 I disagree with half of what he said. Next question came from my boy Kevin B. He said, hey, great man, how's it going? Hope all is well. They just keep saying Lamar can do this, Lamar Jackson can do that. He needs to prove he can do this. No, all he has to do is go play Lamar football and have fun. Coaches has to put players in position to play at their strengths. The less Lamar runs, the more energy he'll have, and that will make teams put less in the box. Man, that that you brought out, the more energy, the less that he runs, the more energy that he'll have. Um, that that reminds me of the video uh, that we did with um, all twenty two, all twenty two NFL films, um, because he brought out some really good points about just how much Lamar Jackson has to do and how draining that can be energy wise for him to have to do the things that he does all game long. That can take a lot out of you. And when he presented that to us, I was like, well, I, I never really thought about it like that before. Now you're bringing it up, too. Uh, he said they only stack the box to stop Lamar. Run the ball or let Lamar throw it. Come on, man. It's not that hard. He should not be running the ball 60% of your run plays. Stay healthy, Ravens. Let's go, Lamar Jackson. And peace and blessings to all. Yeah, it's really important um, that the, the way that they use Lamar. And that they use him more as a quarterback. And again, like I always say, he's still going to get his runs. He's still going to get his runs, and that's fine. But... Let's do a lot less design stuff. Let let him decide when. That's 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 how we should phrase it. Let Lamar Jackson decide when he wants to run, more than you deciding when he when you want him to run. I think that'll be a much better way, uh, a much better use of Lamar Jackson. Set him up for more throws, more short throws, deep throws, just a mix of everything. Um, but let him decide when he's gonna run a lot more than you do. Yeah.